Carrington Wesleyan, a beautiful church, not only in terms of building, but in terms of the people. Geographically, the Carrington Village community is surrounded by several districts. These include Dean's Village, Station Hill, Bridge Road, Tweedside Road, Belmont Road, Martin Dills Road, Halls Road, and strategic landmarks such as Government House and Welch's Post Office. The annals of history have shown that Carrington Village has evolved from being a sugarcane field to become one of the first residential suburbs of Bridgetown. The name Carrington's Village has derived from a family of planters from Cheshire, England, whose surname was Carrington. The family of planters owned a number of properties in Barbados, which included Hampton Plantation, Carrington's Plantation, and Carrington Sugar Factory in St. Philip. Carrington Village was once a part of the Welch's Plantation, now known today as Government House. One of the major landmarks of Carrington Village is the Carrington Wesleyan Holiness Church, which was established in 1980 as an outshoot of White Park Tabernacle, which was built in 1970. Carrington Church was originally sited in Quakers Road, Carrington Village, and it was among the first group of apostolic holiness churches to be founded in Barbados. Research has shown that some prominent ministers, such as Rev. C.P. Jorge and Rev. L.S. Brathway, together with other outstanding laymen, namely Brothers Mayhew, Wilkinson, and Farnham, ably assisted in spearheading a tribe to acquire and renovate a two-roof house into a meeting place for the several converts and followers. In this setting, the early congregation of Carrington comprised largely of disaffected members from the Christian Union and the Christian Mission churches left their assemblies as a result of issues of disagreement which they had. Records show that the new congregants held service four times a week with some support from the White Park Wesleyan Holiness Church. 1921, Carrington moved from Quakers Road to Welch's temporarily. One month later, the Carrington members merged with Pastor James Selomi Smith of the Independent Baptist Mission at Bridge Road, where they were offered the building and they became the expansionist pilgrim. It was during this period that Rev. C. P. Hore, originally from British Guyana, served during the period 1918 to 1920 and was described as a fairy evangelist. He was the founder pastor and also pioneered the sexual church of St. Philip, now renamed Rema Wesleyan Holiness Church, as well as the work in St. Lucia. Reverend Louis S. Brathwaite, a Barbadian of 
Christian mission origins served from 1920 to 1924. He was well educated and ecclesiastically advanced with regal bearing and also served as district superintendent. During the post 1925 period, outreached by the members of Carrington Assembly in the Dean's Village area, confirmed a growing spiritual interest which led to the church obtaining a building in the area. By 1927, it was evident that a larger building was needed to accommodate the membership. A new Dean's Village Church was built at a cost of $1,000 and later dedicated on June 10, 1928. The Dove Band in Columbus, Ohio, with which Reverend Wingrove Ives was associated, contributed $116 towards the construction cost as a memorial to their founder and Mary Wright, a former slave who assisted many of her oppressed people to obtain freedom, one of whom was Alzia of Uncle Tom's cabin fame. The old structure was relocated to start the church in Cayville and during the three months it took to build the new church, the Dean Village Saints Worship under a tent. Pastor James D. Tucker was the pastor. In 1929, the building had to be extended to meet the steady growth of membership which stood at 160 members. The sole female Reverend Philomena Dummy, born in 1894 in British Guyana at age 26, had dedicated her life to missionary work, who also served as assistant to two great leaders between 1922 to 1931, as assistant to Reverend and Jorge for a total of nine years and served as pastor from 1931 to 1936. Reverend Dummett is credited as a stabilizing influence in conflict and as a being responsible for the systematic organization of the assembly molding the character of the Sunday School and establishing a song foundation on which future leaders have built. Minister Oswell Boss Clark served as supply pastor from 1936 to 1938, following Reverend Dummett's resignation. During that tenure, the membership of the church surpassed the 200 milestone. He qualifies as an outstanding layman who was the man for his season. He also served as district builder for several years. Reverend L. L. Miller served between 1938 to 1942. He was an American missionary and district superintendent. Reverend D.G. Felker, also an American missionary, served during the period 1942 to 1945 while he was president of the then Caribbean Pilgrim College. Reverend A.M. Dahl was also an American missionary and served from 1945 to 1947 and was the last non-native to serve the church. The Carrington Church was also 
intimately associated with the emergence and development of the Britain's Hill Wesleyan Holiness Church. As the work intensified and expanded and consolidated, some members of the parent assembly were transferred to constitute a new church in 1951 under the guidance of American missionaries Reverend Mistress Ruth B. Miller and Reverend Miss Gladys Dooley. Land was purchased and a new, larger building constructed and opened on the 24th of April 1955. At this juncture, it should be noted that Reverend Irvin M. Wickham served during the period 1947 to 1962 and was described as a dynamic pastor and fruitful preacher. During his tenure, that Barbados became a fully indigenous operation in 1965, a historic milestone in Caribbean church history. From the reports recorded in 1954, a site was purchased to build a larger church for the expanding congregation, but the original owner of the said property returned the money, and Clay stated that she did not want any church on her land. In light of this setback, it did not phase the members nor the management of Carrington Wesley Holiness Church. Better yet, it emboldened them because in 1955, they purchased a plot of land at Welch's and constructed the present church. However, the preliminary construction work at this location was deferred until late 1956 because of the Hurricane Janet. Carrington Church experienced two dedications, 1956 1957. Research has also revealed that the present Carrington Church building was first dedicated under the superintendence of Reverend Sanders and 1,500 people witnessed the 100 persons witnessed the February 24, 1957 dedication. Reverend Flexen, the Secretary of Foreign Missions, who was in Barbados for the district conference, was the officiating officer at this dedication ceremony. There were some criticism regarding the two events. However, reports reveal that it was felt that the second dedication was not necessary. In light of these events regarding both dedications, the second day was accepted as the official dedication day since the church was dedicated as the Olsen Memorial and in memory of the wife of noted American missionary Reverend Henry J. Olsen, who had contributed a considerable sum of money to assist in the construction of the church. At this point, Reverend Gordon Colin West had arrived on the scene and He'd served from 1963 to 1989. Reverend West had an extended period as Assistant District Superintendent. To date, his record as the longest serving pastor of the church still stands. And it should be noted that the church building was extended to accommodate existing office facilities during Reverend West's tenure. Reverend Hinsley Griffith followed after Reverend West and his tenure was from 1989 to 1999. The membership exceeded the 400 mark. 
Reverend Ricardo Taylor, the youth pastor, took over the leadership of the church and served from 2000 to 2007 before resigning and eventually withdrawing from the Wesleyan Holiness Church. The pastor of the Kairos Assembly by Corliss St. Lucy was installed at Carrington Wesleyan Holiness Church as senior pastor on Sunday, the 4th of May, 2008, and has commenced implementation of a phased redevelopment plan. To comprehensively upgrade and enhance the plant's infrastructure and equipment. As part of the first phase, old structure underwent an extensive and expensive refurbishment in 2010. Lauren was replaced. And significant restorative work undertaken to both the interior and exterior. Church of Choice.